Welcome to part two of this tutorial series where we're creating this sci-fi passage in Blender. So in part one, we modeled most of the sci-fi passage, and in this part, we're gonna be finishing up the modeling. So we're gonna be modeling the back wall of the sci-fi passage, and we'll also add a camera and do just a few more things. And if you'd like to help support me and this channel, then you can also purchase the tutorial files on my Gumroad store and my Patreon page. I'll have the links in the description. So to create the back wall, I am going to be duplicating this object here. So I'm going to zoom out here and then I'm going to press shift D that is going to duplicate the object. And then I'm going to hit Y to bring it over on the Y axis and I'm going to bring it over here. Now I want to rotate it over. So I'm going to hit R to rotate. Let's hit Z to rotate it over on the Z axis. And then I can type in nine zero. And then I want to actually want to type in negative to rotate it by negative 90 degrees and then hit enter. Now I don't want the mirror modifier to be mirroring it over on both sides because I want to be able to see the back wall through the other tunnel. So what I'm going to do is just click on this X button right here to turn that off on the X axis. So it's not mirroring it over on the X axis, but it's still mirroring it over on the Y axis. And then I can press the seven on the numpad for top view. And I just want to bring this closer. So I'm going to press G to grab. Let's bring this over on the Y axis and we're just going to stick that there. And then I can bring this over on the X axis as well. And I want to bring this over farther and I'm actually going to stick this right about there. So if you go right over here into the sci-fi tunnel, you can kind of go in here and zoom in. And you can kind of see how this is looking. So then what you can do is press G to grab and you can bring it over on the x-axis. You can just bring this to somewhere where you like. So I want to bring it over on the x-axis so that you can just see a little bit of that part right there. So if I zoom in, I do want to be able to see a little bit of that. And then I also want to be able to see this piece here. So something like that. And while we're kind of looking at this from this view, we might as well add a camera now. So I'm going to press shift A and let's go right down here and add a camera. So then what I can do is I can just move to where I want the camera to be. So I want the camera to be probably about here. And then I can press control alt numpad zero. Control Alt Numpad 0 is going to bring the camera to where we are. And also, I just realized this timeline right down here, we don't need this. We're not going to be doing any animation. So I'm just going to move my mouse right over here when the crosshair appears, and I can click, drag up, and then drag down, and then just let go to close the timeline. All right, now I want to move the camera around. So you can just click right up here to make sure you select the camera. So to move the camera around, I can press G, and G is going to grab the camera and move it around. And also before I continue moving the camera, I want to go right down here to the camera settings. And right here on the focal length, I actually want to turn the focal length up a little bit. So I find that a focal length of like 60 looks pretty good. So if you turn the focal length way up, things are going to be much more flat. But if you turn the focal length way down, you're going to be able to see more things, but there are going to be more of like a fisheye effect. You can see there's all that stretching there. So I think that 60 works pretty well for this scene. So now let's move the camera. So I want to bring the camera down a bit. So I'm going to press G to grab and then I'm going to hit Z to bring it down on the Z axis and I'm going to bring that down a bit. And then I also want to rotate it up. So I'm going to double tap the R key and that's going to activate the trackball rotation. And then I'm going to hold down the shift key to make my movements more sensitive. And I'm just going to stick it right about there. And then I also want to bring it back a little bit. So I'm going to press G to grab and then I can hit the Z key twice. And and that way we can bring the camera in and out. And I am just going to bring the camera to right about there. Maybe just bring it in a little bit closer. And then again, you can double tap the R key to do the trackball rotation and just kind of rotate this around as needed. So I think that is pretty good. I think that's a pretty nice composition. All right, so I'm gonna click with my middle mouse wheel to move out of the camera's view. And then I just wanna like zoom in here and I'm gonna go inside these tunnels. So right here where both of these tunnels are connecting, you can see that there are some problems here. Um, it's not really connecting that well. And especially if I look at this from where the camera is actually going to see it from this spot right here. You can see that there's a little bit of an opening there and I don't want to see that. So basically what I want to do is I want to add a metal piece which is going around this piece and then I want to give it some thickness and it'll be good for connecting these two pieces together because like right here you can see that there's a little gap in between these two pieces and there's also like that gap right there. So what I'm going to do is select this piece right here, the piece on the back, and I'm going to press H to hide it. I'm now going to select this object here and I'm going Going to press the tab key to go into edit mode. 
Now you can see when I tab into edit mode, it's just going to hide the mirror. And so I actually want to zoom over here. And then what I want to do is actually zoom right over here into this center piece. So I can now click right here to go to the vertex select. And then I'm going to hold down the alt key and just select that loop right there. And then I can hold down the shift and alt key and select that loop and then shift alt select that loop and then just hold down the shift key and select that vertex and that vertex. So I now want to duplicate this and make it its own object. So I'm going to press shift D to duplicate. Let's bring this over here and I'm just going to bring it out here. And then I want to separate this into its own object. So I'm going to press the P button and then I'm going to click on selection. So we are separating the selection into its own object. And then I can tab to go back to object mode. So I now want to click on this object right here and I want to go right over here to the modifier properties. And I don't want the array modifier. So right down here on the array, I can just click on the X button to get rid of the array modifier. Now I also don't want this to be mirrored over on the Y axis. I just want it to be mirrored back and forth this way on the X axis. So with this object still selected, I'm just gonna click on this button right here to get rid of the Y axis on the mirror. And then also you can see the origin point is way over here. So I'm gonna press the tab key to go into edit mode press the A key to select everything. And I can actually click on this button right here on the mirror modifier. And this way in edit mode, we are still able to see the mirror modifier. So I can now press G to grab and let's bring this over on the Y axis. And I'm just gonna bring that closer to the origin point. And you can also hold down the Z button and go into wireframe and just kind of bring it there closer to the origin. And then I can press the tab key to go back to object mode. So I'm now going to press seven on the numpad. That's gonna to go to the top view. And I'm going to navigate right over here. And then I want to press Alt H and Alt H is going to unhide that object that we hid. And then I want to zoom in here and just select this object here. So I can now press G to grab. Let's bring this over on the Y axis. G to grab, bring it over on the Y axis again. And we want to stick it right here. So stick it right there where the two pieces connect. And then I can hold down the Z button and go back into solid view. And then again, I can just select this piece and I'm going to press the H key to hide it just to get it out of the way. So I'm now going to select this object again and I'm going to press tab to go to edit mode and I want to scale it down. So I'm going to press S to scale and we're going to scale this down much smaller so that it is smaller than any of the other geometry. And I'm also going to bring it down on the Z axis and then I want to bring it back a little bit. So I'll press G to grab. Click with your mouse wheel, constrain it to the X axis, and it just stick that there. Now I wanna give this object some thickness, so I'm gonna go right over here to the side, and I'm gonna press E to extrude, and let's extrude it over on the Y axis, and I'm gonna stick that out about there. Now for some reason, this may be happening for you, it may not, but if I zoom in here, for some reason on my mesh, there's kind of a glitch here. So what I'm gonna do is go right here to the face select, or you can also press the three on the top of your keyboard. And then I'm just going to click right here to select this big face. Then I can press X to delete and I wanna click on only faces. So that is just gonna delete that face in there. So then I can go back here to the vertex select and I'm gonna hold down the shift key and just shift select all these vertices. And then I can press the F key to fill a face and that should fix that problem there. So I can tab to go back to object mode. Now I wanna give this some more thickness coming out this way. So I'm gonna click on add modifier and I'm gonna go right down here and add the solidify modifier. And then I actually want the solidify modifier to take effect before the bevel. And that way the bevel will actually bevel it after it's been solidified. So I can click right here on these little dots and I'm gonna drag up and drag that over and just place it there. And then I can take the thickness value on the solidify and I can turn that up. And I actually wanna bring it to a negative value so that it comes out this way. And now you can see that bevel modifier is beveling it after it has the thickness. Now the bevel is way too too big so I'm just going to turn this amount way down so make it much smaller and just make it about the same size as the bevel right there on that other object so make it pretty small and then I can also use the object context menu to shade the object smooth all right so now I can make this a bit thicker so right here on the solidify I'm just going to turn this up and I'm also going to click on the even thickness button just to make sure that the thickness is even all the way around and I can bring out that thickness and make that a bit bigger just like that and then I want to kind of bring 
bring it in a little bit. So I'm gonna bring it over on the Y axis and stick it there. So I can now press Alt H. Alt H is gonna unhide that other object. And I'm just gonna zoom in here. You can now see that this object is connecting into this object. And so that is good and it actually looks nice because there isn't any open areas. This little metal beam here is kind of filling in those areas. So I can press the zero on the numpad to go into the camera view and that is looking very good. Let's press Control S again to save. All right, now right over here on the sides, you can see that there are these little cylinder lights, but right over here on this object here on the back of the tunnel or the passage, I don't actually want one of those emission lights. I just find that that's too much light and I don't really want one of those lights back there. So I'm gonna press the tab key to go into edit mode of this object. And then I'm going to zoom in right over here to this first light and I'm gonna press the A key to deselect everything. So I can now click right here to go to the face select and then I can just hover my mouse over the object and press L that's going to select the linked vertices and then also right over here hover your mouse over the object and press L to select the linked vertices so I can now press X to delete and we just want to delete the vertices all right so now if I press tab to go back to object mode and then press the zero on the numpad to go into the camera view I can zoom in there and you can just see that that light isn't there anymore so that is what I want now right back here I also am going to want some other lights here in the back so let's do that so again just make sure that this object is selected and I can press tab to go into edit mode. Now I actually want to be able to preview the object where it's actually going to be. So I'm going to apply the mirror modifier and I'm also going to apply the ray array modifier on this object. So I'll just press the tab key to go back to object mode. You can see it kind of changes. So right back here in object mode, I'm gonna to go to the mirror modifier and I can just click on the drop down and click on apply. And then also right here on the array, I can click on the drop down and I can click on apply. So now if I press the tab key to go into edit mode you can see this is all geometry now and we don't actually need all of this geometry all we need is the geometry right here where we're going to see it so if you want to you can press 7 on the numpad for top view and I'm going to hold down the Z button and move my mouse over to the wireframe and I can just delete all the extra geometry that we don't need so I'm going to click right here to go to the vertex select you can also press the one on the top of your keyboard so I will now press the a key to deselect everything I'll press B for the box select and I'm just gonna like box select all of these vertices and then B for the box select and I'm just gonna box select all these vertices. So press the zero on the numpad to make sure that you can't see any of the selection. So if I hold down the Z button, go back into the solid view. If I zoom in here, you can see that we're not able to see any of the selected vertices. So we can delete these because they're not gonna show up in the final render. So I can press X to delete and we want to delete the vertices. So I can press zero to go into the camera view. And you can see it looks the same, so that is fine. We just need this little area right in here because that is the area that we're gonna see. So with everything selected, I can press the period key on the numpad. That's gonna zoom me in here. And I'm just gonna go inside the passage and just kind of zoom in here. So now what I wanna do is I wanna take some of these light objects and I wanna duplicate them and move them around. And then in the next part of the tutorial series, we're gonna be adding emission materials to these buttons. And that way in the camera View, it'll look like there's some little buttons and lights on the very back of the sci-fi passage. So I'm just going to zoom in here and then I'm going to just press the A key to make sure everything is deselected. So I'm now going to hover my mouse over one of these lights and press the L key. That is going to select the linked vertices and then I just want to duplicate it and move it over. So I'm going to press Shift D to duplicate and let's bring this over here. And then I could just kind of move it into place manually by like coming over here to the side and bringing it in. But instead of doing this, I can just use Blender's snapping feature to snap it to the wall. So I'm going to click on this button right here. We use the snapping feature in part one of the tutorial series. So the settings should all be set up already. But if they're not, you can click right here. And I want the snap two to be set to face. And that way when I press G to grab, it's going to snap to the face. And then also I want it to snap with the center. So right here, choose center. And that way it's going to snap it from the very center of the selection. So I can now just press G to grab, and I'm just going to stick one light there. And then I'm going to press Shift D to duplicate. We're going to stick another one there, and then I can press Shift D to duplicate. Let's stick one down there. And I also want to make this one more square, so I can scale this on the X axis and make it more of a square. And then I can scale the whole thing down and kind of bring it over. And then I'll press Shift D to duplicate. Let's put another one there, and then Shift D to duplicate. Stick another one really close. You can of course move these around and 
get them to how you like. And of course, in the next part of the tutorial series, once we actually light these up, if you see some things that you want to change, you can totally change that up. I'm going to press Shift D to duplicate, put another one there. So you don't have to do it exactly like I'm doing it, um, but you can if you want to. And then I can press Shift D again to duplicate. Let's put another one up here. And I think I will scale this one up on the X axis and then maybe scale the whole thing down a little bit just to make kind of a long piece. A to D select. I'm going to hover my mouse over this object and press L to select the linked vertices. And I can press Shift D to duplicate and let's stick one here. And I could also scale this up just a little. And then a Shift D again to duplicate. Let's put one in here, kind of scale it down, bring that over there. Let's duplicate this again, put one here, and we'll also duplicate this and put another one there. And I can duplicate this and put a few more here and there, just like one up here and one down there. Maybe even press the L key to select that one, duplicate this one, and we're going to put another one there. Now, I don't actually want to be able to see this control panel because I did find that adding a control panel here does add a lot of lights. And in the camera view, there's just not going to be a lot of lights there, and that's kind of too many. So I don't really want to be able to see that control panel. So just jump out of the camera view, and I'm just going to zoom back in here. So I'm going to press the L key with my mouse hovered over the control panel, press the L key. And then also, I want to delete the buttons, so I'm going to press L and L to select the linked vertices. And then I can just press X to delete and we just want to delete the vertices. And then I want to delete a few of these. So I'm going to press the L key and the L key and the L key just to select some of those. And we can press X to delete and I can delete the vertices. So now just hover your mouse over these ones and press L to select the entire thing. G to grab and S to scale. And you could also scale this up on the Y axis to make it longer. And just kind of put these into place. So just like that, just a few here and there. And then also this big light right here, I want this to be very thin because again, I don't want too many lights in the background, but I do want a few lights here and there. So press the L key with your mouse hovered over that object and I can press S to scale. Let's scale it down on the X axis this and just make it really thin. So just like that. All right, so I can now turn off the snapping feature because we don't need that anymore. So I can press the tab key to go back to object mode and I can press the zero on the numpad to go back into the camera view. And I'm just going to zoom out here. So I can press control S again to save and this is going to finish it up for part two of the tutorial series. So again, thank you so much for watching and I hope you've been enjoying the tutorial series. So in the last part, part three, we are going to be finishing up the scene. So we're going to be adding the materials and the lighting and then we are going to render the final image and then do some compositing to get a really nice finished render. So if you want to watch part three I will have it right up there on the end screen when it's released and also the link in the video description. So thank you for watching and I will see you in the last part part three.